God does not leave us alone to figure out the future. Sometimes it feels like it that way. We feel like, okay, we've got to rack our brains and use all the wisdom we have and figure out what to do next. But God does not leave us alone to that. He walks with us through that process. He gives us the power to accomplish that. In Acts chapter 1, Paul, or Jesus told his followers, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But you're not by yourself. You've got power from the Holy Spirit. Paul told Timothy that the Spirit of God, the Spirit that God gave us, did not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. That what we have to face, God gives us power to face. We have to trust Him to provide that. That He's not left us by Himself because God's power is in us. We can walk by faith and not by fear. Knowing that our strength is not all we have available to us. Our resources are not all that we have. Our wisdom is not all that we have. But God provides those things that we need because God is near. He told Joshua, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever he goes. God has not abandoned us, even though the way we're used to doing things seems so foreign to us. God has not abandoned us. And the purpose that we have to face is, is, has not changed. I, um, this past week, saw online that one of the largest churches in the country, uh, North Point Church in Atlanta, uh, has over 30,000 to 10 on Sunday mornings. They have chosen to shut down all their Sunday morning gatherings uh, because of COVID. CNN came to interview the pastor, Andy Stanley, about this decision to close, to, to close down his church, as they put it. And his response I thought was so great. He said, we're not closing down the church. We're not having Sunday morning services. But the work of the church goes on. What we do in the community to care for people goes on. Our witness to the families around us goes on. We chose not to have Sunday morning services because we gather a thousand every week and it's a safety issue for our community. Not just our members, but those with the place where our members work. We, we don't have, we can't do a 10 person service, a 20 person service. We have thousands that come. And so for the safety of our community, we decided not to do this one aspect of our calendar. But the work of the church doesn't stop because we don't do this one thing like we've always done. I thought that was a powerful word to both Christians and church leaders and the world. That the work of the church is not just about how we do the activities we've always done. It's about making a difference in our community in ways that God leads us to do. Making COVID packets for those who work with patients. Finding ways to serve our community. The work of the church is not just what takes place at 10.30 on Sunday morning. And just because that may change for a while, doesn't mean the work of the church stops. Doesn't mean that the thing that God calls us to do is any less important. And pro probably in a lot of ways, the thing that takes place outside this hour on Sunday mornings is the most important thing the, work tr the church does. Because it affects those who aren't here today. With the love and the kindness and the grace of God. And so as things change, we need to know that God has not abandoned us, and God is not self-quarantined. God is not social spacing. God is not wearing a mask. God is not six feet apart. God is with us all the time, and God's call to us has not changed. We are still to be his people. We are still to reach those who don't know him. We are still to encourage the followers of Jesus. We are still to grow in becoming like Jesus. And just because it looks different now than it did a year ago, doesn't mean the purpose of the plan and the mission of God has changed. We have to trust God to lead us in that way, to know that he's near, to know that he's walking with us. Regardless of social changes, God doesn't change. God doesn't leave. He is as much with us today as he was in February. In fact, I, we, never, I don't, we don't think about it this way. You are as close to God now as you've, as you've ever been and as you will ever be. Because the presence of God lives inside you through the Holy Spirit. 
God is with you every step of the way. He has not left you. He's not forsaken you. He's not gone off someplace. He's not, he's not waiting in heaven for all this to pass by. God is with us through this whole process. God is with us through this whole process. He's close to us. He empowers us. He walks with us wherever we go. He's with us and we find ways to serve people. And so we take trust in that, that God is near and God is leading and God is with us. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And, and surely I am with you always, the very end of the age. He says, as you do the things I've called you to do, to make disciples, to teach, to baptize, I am with you always. You're not by yourself. You're not alone. And my plan and purpose doesn't change. Sometimes we don't notice God's presence with us until after the fact. When we see them, okay, God opened this door. God provided this opportunity. God gave me the words to say. God helped me control my temper. God was with us all the time. We need to remember that even when things change, maybe mostly when things change, no matter what changes around us in society or culture, God doesn't change, and God is always near. Therefore, to follow where God's leading. You have to trust Him. What does trusting God look like? Trusting God means obeying God. It means doing what He says. Jesus told the apostles after He had ascended to heaven, Be about my business. You don't worry about the future. Is this a time when you're going to establish your kingdom? You don't, you work, don't worry about that. You do the things I've called you to do. You be about my business. Keep focused on who I am, what I've called you to be, and what I've called you to do. Trust me. And, do, and, and obey. Again, God told Joshua, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from the right or the left. Show you successful wherever you go. Keep this book, the law, always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. So you be careful to, to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Have not commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God told Joshua, no what difficulties you face when I know certain things are in front of you, whatever dragons may be out there, obey my word. Do what it says. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Follow God's word. Be focused on who you are, what I've called you to do. Obey me. Every part of it. You take the, Joshua, take the word, word God at his word at every point, not just the easy parts, but every part. God said, do what I say, even if it does seem a bit out of the ordinary. And God called Joshua to do a lot of out of the ordinary things. He came out the walls of Jericho, where he called him to walk around with the wall of blowing trumpets. I'm sure Joshua had second thoughts about that plan. God's plan call was obey my word and you'll be successful. Obey my word, do what I say, and I'll be with you. The Lord will do what he says he will do. We just have to believe him and obey. We have to make sure that, that as a body, we are knowing God's word. Following God's word, trusting God, obeying God's word as we understand. Pursuing, the, pursuing that truth as much as possible. Society and cultural culture shifts and changes all the time. God and his word do not. So we stick with that. How we do ministry as a body will shift and change to some degree. What we have to stick to is the word of God and follow the way. What God calls us to do as far as making disciples and reaching out to nations doesn't change. What that looks like will be different. It looks different today than it did six months ago. It looks different in six months than it does today. But the word of God and the truth of God doesn't change. And that's what we follow. Some things never change. And that's the word of God. That's God himself. And his call to us to obey him. The only thing that could stop the people of God from receiving what God promised was themselves. 
their lack of trust in God, their unwillingness to move forward, their loss of focus on who they were and what God had called them to do. And the same is true for us. It's essential that we pull together and in the same direction, trusting God, empowered by God, obeying God, taking responsibility for the life and outreach of the church, even when we're scattered or socially distant. How can we accomplish what God's called us to accomplish in a new world with a new reality? The key is our obedience to God. Sister, I'm talking about seeing the bigger picture. What's the bigger picture we need to see? That God is faithful. No matter what happens around us, how things change, how difficult they may seem to be for us, but it causes us to adjust. God is faithful. He will keep his promise. He will do what he says. Therefore, we're called to trust him, to be strong and courageous, to obey him, and keep our minds set on him. Please pray with me. Father, we thank you so much that in a world where things seem to change almost daily, you never change. That you and your word are always the same. That your love for us never diminishes. That your purpose for us never changes. That our standing with you is, is always based upon Christ's sacrifice for us, his resurrection, your mercy, and your grace. Help us, Father, be people who trust you in that. Who, as we move into unknown times, follow you, confident in your presence and your power, seeking only to obey you and honor you place you put us in the time which we live. We pray these things in Jesus' name.